So for this video, I decided to dedicate it to boiler breakdowns and repairs. So we have quite a few different boilers we're working on. Now, if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, then it's just a collection of different jobs I go to as a gas engineer. These videos I post online are mainly just for entertainment purposes. If you do want to get a better understanding of boiler repairs, diagnosing, wiring systems, wiring thermostats, then you can check out the links in the description. But let's get into the video. So for this first job, we've got a main eco compact that seems completely dead. But if you listen closely, you can still hear it running. When I switch it off, you hear it go silent. And when I switch it back on, you can hear it starting to run. So I believe that the screen on this boiler is dead. But to change the screen, you have to change the PCB. So this boiler, we're changing over the PCB. So the first thing we need to do is just pop off this front panel. Now, in terms of taking the panel off, it's easy, just a bunch of plastic clips. And then we can see the PCB. Now, in terms of taking the connections out, it's really easy. Most of them just pull out or they've got a little clips that you've got to press in. Now, a big tip, and it's what I used to do when I first started changing PCBs, is just take a picture of the PCB before you take off any connections. A lot of the connections will only go in one place, but just to save you being confused on did this go here, did that go there, where did this go, what's this extra cable for, if you take a picture before, you can see exactly where everything went. And lastly, we just got a few screws which are holding down the PCB, but once we took those out, the PCB should just lift up and out. And here you can see the screen which you saw in the beginning of the video that was just completely dead. So here we've got the new one, but what we need to do is we need to take this little chip out of the old one and pop it into the new one. And at this point, the PCB is ready to go back in. We just need to line up the little spindles with the connections on here, and then it should just slide in. And finally, we're just gonna pop in all of the connections. Most of them will only go in one place, but if you get confused, then you've always got a picture that you can refer to. Now normally you'd put this connection on after you've put the front panel back on, but I just wanted to quickly test it to make sure it's all working. And there you go, screen is working. Now at this point I've popped that plastic panel back on. I'm gonna turn the boiler on, let it fire up. I'll then do all my safety checks to make sure that the boiler's okay to be using. And if it is, then that's this job sorted. So for this repair, we are working on a Instagas and we need to change over this expansion vessel and the PRV, which is right behind it, right there. Now, the reason we are swapping over this vessel is because it's leaking water from the Schrader valve. So when I went to put my pump on it, it was just shooting out water everywhere, which is a classic sign it's failed. And when I was trying to move it, it weighed a ton. <laughs> it was super heavy to move. So yeah, so now that's out of the way, you can see the PRV is there. So I'm gonna drain down the boiler using the PRV because I'm gonna be changing the PRV anyway. So I've disconnected the vessel just by undoing that nut at the top, which you should be able to see right there. And now that it's out of the way, I can take out this PRV. So first thing we need to do is take off this little black rubber tube. Once it's off, we can rotate the PRV towards us and then we should be able to spin out that little plastic elbow. 
Finally, we can unscrew the PLV. And yes, I did mean to drop it. I meant to do it. <laughs> I didn't. Um, but yeah, now that that PLV is out, we can put some PCFE around the thread and we can put the new PLV in. Now, in little situations like this, what you can do is you can use a pen, pencil, screwdriver, whatever's thin to apply PTFE in a tight spot like this. As you can imagine, that massive roll of PTFE, it's not really going to fit here and it'll make it difficult. So if you just get that PTFE and wrap it around the pen, and then once you've done enough wraps around the pen, you can then use that pen as the roll of PTFE and apply it to something that's in a tight space like this. And then on the final half last turn, you're going to pop your blue elbow back in again with some PTFE and then you can rotate it around. So I pop the rubber tube back on and that's the PRV all done. And in terms of the vessel, again, you just got one nut at the bottom and then it's just a clamp on the left to put it back in place. For this next job, we are working on a glow on micron. Now, if I turn it on, I can hear straight away it's the fan that's giving issues so the reason the customer called is they said that their boiler is working sometimes and sometimes it's not now luckily when i got there the boiler was working so i could immediately identify it was the fan but then what would happen is the fan would just randomly stop spinning i'd still get 230 volts on the live and neutral but it would just be stopped but what i noticed is if i get a screwdriver and i just pinged the fan a little bit kind of give it a jump start it would start spinning again so the fan was just on its last legs so i decided to get a new fan and swap it over so the first thing i'm going to do is remove the electrical connections and just get them out of the way then i can pop off the little tubes for the air pressure switch next we've got a clamp which we can loosen with a screwdriver once that's loose we've then got four screws we need to take out to be able to slide this whole fan unit out Front two screws are out, we've now got two screws at the back which are a little bit trickier to get to so I'm going to break out my little socket set. I'm going to use this to do the back right and back left screw. I just realised I didn't record me undoing that clamp but that clamp can be a bit challenging to undo but you can just use a screwdriver to ping it, I'm talking about that top right one. And once you've done that, you've undone the screws, you should be able to start wiggling this whole unit towards you. Now, you probably will need to use two hands to twist the elbow while you're pulling the whole unit at the same time. I'm obviously trying to record one hand and pull with one hand, so I can't really show it properly. But yeah, twist the elbow, pull the whole tray, and it will slowly start to wiggle out. Now that this whole unit is out, I can wiggle this little elbow off. And then to take the fan off, we just got one, two, three screws. And that is our faulty fan out. Now in terms of comparison, this is the new fan, and this is how the old fan used to spin. Big difference. So in terms of putting it back together, it's the exact same process as taking it out, but just in reverse.
all right at this point everything's put back together i've tightened all the clamps on the flue and now we can try fire up and see if it works there you go we don't have that horrible squealing this time from the fan as well for this next boiler we have a heat line and i really like this repair because there was a few things wrong with this boiler and i feel like it just kept me on my toes a little bit so the first issue the customer complained about is they don't have heating the heating doesn't work at all so first thing i can see is the little timer on the front the switch has snapped so what i want to do is i want to force that onto the on position to see if the heating works so i've just used a flathead screwdriver and it's hard to see but i basically just pinged it over to the one which means the heating should now be coming on and it is you can see we're getting a demand now so the heating in theory should work now i fixed one problem but now there's a new problem so the flow isn't getting hot but on the boiler it's saying it's getting to 80 degrees so now we have some type of circulation issue so and now i've got to figure out what's going on with that okay so this is all a bit of a mess here but one thing i can see is the return seems like it's on the off position so let's hope it's as simple as opening this up and the heating works unfortunately that didn't work i wish it would have been that simple so it's still overheating on hot water and heating so there's definitely an issue within the boiler now on these boilers they do have a canoe filter that can get blocked very similar to the valent ecotech pros they've got a canoe filter just before the plate so with this one i'm gonna try to take it out hopefully it comes out in one piece and inspect it to see if that's the issue so on my first attempt i am struggling to get it out sometimes they can be absolutely super glued in to the point where you've got to take the whole block out but i really don't want to do that so i'm gonna try a little bit more just from the state of this i can tell that this is going to be the issue and the system is really dirty but finally managed to get it out and you can see it's clogged up so i'm gonna try clean this out put a new canoe filter in and hopefully that sorts the issue i've popped the new canoe filter in and now we're going to pop in this flow pipe so how this flow pipe works is you need to push it all the way down then line it up and then you can slide it back up Pretty much lined it up, just need to wiggle it up and put the clips in. Now we can shut the drain off, open up the isolation valves and fill up. And finally, the boiler seems to be working on hot water and heating. So I'm gonna stay, make sure all the brands get hot, make sure the water's not cutting out anymore. And I'm just gonna quickly take a look at the individual flow and return temperatures just to make sure that's okay as well. But I forgot to put the flow temperature sensor back on the flow. So I was wondering why the temperature seems so cool, especially after the boiler had been on for a while. So I put that back on and everything seemed to be fine. <laughs> 